Okay, so we're gonna figure out how to do these bar numbers. So in Dorco, pretty simple. We're gonna hit uh, on PC, it's Control Shift L. On Mac, it's Command Shift L for layout options. We are dealing with the full score layout. Uh, let's see here. Bar numbers, bar numbers. Okay, frequency, every bar, great. So let's see what that looks like, actually. If I just move this, now we have bar numbers on every bar, but there's more. We're gonna show them below the bottom staff of the system. So that'll drag them down, way down to the bottom. We're going to center them on the bar and we are going to put them in a box. So that's enclosure type rectangle, apply. And they're there, cool. We could also, since a lot of those uh, example scores I had, had them kind of, had the bar numbers in the middle of the page as well. Let's see. They were below the organ prelay and the woodwinds or above piano. Let's just say we'll put them above keys one. Let's, I I've, normally don't do this, let's see what happens. We have them there and there. Okay, that, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna go deeper. So I think it looks kind of janky to have italicized bar numbers in boxes. I don't know, it's kind of off-putting to me. So we are going to change this. Now, the way that we initially were dealing with bar numbers was through layout options, but we're gonna do something a little cooler to actually change the appearance of the numbers. We're gonna go to engrave, because this is, this is a weird thing. If you look up here in the uh, menu bar or whatever it's called, we're in write mode. We've got file edit view write with all of our music writing options. If we go to engrave mode, file edit view engrave. So the only way to access the particular menu item I want now is to be in engrave mode. So I click engrave. We're gonna go to paragraph styles. Now, bar numbers. So bar numbers, score. That's what's being used for this. There are two things you can do. Uh, I'll show you one way, and then when we look at the parts, I'll show you the other way. We're just gonna change it. We're gonna go italic, no, regular. Ugh, so much better. Cool, so I think that looks fantastic. Let's talk about parts and bar numbers in parts. We can do exactly the same thing if we want, or we can do something more fun. Uh, Weird behavior in Dorico, if I wanted to bring up a flute part, just like Sibelius, I would hit W, like I click it, click anything, and I hit W. But if there's no music for that instrument, W won't bring the part up, whatever. So I can go up here, click flute one. Now, we're not gonna see the bar numbers because if there's no music in the part, it'll just say tacit. So we are going to enter some arbitrary music. Okay, so now if, I, if I'm if i in here and I click W, it will bring up the part. If I hit W again, it'll bring me back to the score. So I'm just gonna go here. Does this work? Yeah, I'm hitting R. Cool, okay. Now notice we only have the default bar numbers every system. Do not like that. So I'm gonna go back to layout options and make the change. Now, in layout options, I have selected flute one because I'm, I happen to be looking at that layout. Uh, we want bar numbers on every, every bar for every single instrument. So I'm gonna select all and then control click full score. Bam. So. You can do that, that's totally kosher. And and uh, it's italicized, we can change that too. But I think it's overkill for parts, right? Because the full score is a very large piece of paper with very small music, and it's kind of far away from the conductor. Whereas the flute, the paper is much closer to the player's face. I think it's overkill to have huge boxed bar numbers. So I'm gonna 
give you another option that you see a lot in music theater, which should look like this. And I, I think this looks fine. So we're going to go centered on bar line, uh, below, and none. I'm going to apply. Cool. So that's getting there. We're going to make it closer to the staff. I'm going to put it one space away from the staff. That might be a little tight. That looks fine. And then we're going to go crazy. So let's see. Engrave. I'm going to go back to changing the paragraph style. Parts. Here's where we're going to do things differently. So I'm going to make a new paragraph style based on the parts. So that's this button here, new from selection. So it makes bar numbers parts one. So it's just a copy. And we're going to call this uh, sans. OK, and we are going to pick a sans serif font. Uh, if I was on my Mac, it would be Helvetica. Here, we'll just do Arial. And we're going to make it smaller. Now, I don't actually know if this will make a difference. Whatever. And that should be good. OK, now that change didn't propagate because we need to select that paragraph style. So once again, I'm selecting all of the parts. And we're going to choose our new, newly created bar number parts sans. I think I could make, why is it still italic? Hmm. This is good. We're we're all learning together. Paragraph styles. Sans. Style. Do I have to do this? Ah, okay. Yeah. So uh, if you didn't catch that, weird that's weird. I didn't think that would have an effect. Uh this is the little toggle to change how you want the text to appear. Uh, since it was off, I assumed it would just default to regular, but that's not the case. So we're going to make it regular, and we're going to make it smaller. Okay, so that's just another option for bar numbers. I think it's totally legible. Oh god, okay, one more thing. Notice once the numbers get bigger, like if you, especially if you're into the hundreds, on treble clef instruments, it collides with the treble clef kind of kind of a bummer. It's also just because I like having the bar numbers so tight up to the staff. Uh, there's this sort of unresolved collision, but there's an option for that. So again, layout options. Er, this, yeah, this is new. Position bar numbers at start of system after clef and key signature. So once again, we're going to select all of those. Arguably, you could just do it for the treble clef instruments because it doesn't collide with bass clef or, or tenor or alto. Let's see. Cool. Uh, I mean, it, it looks a little wonky to me, but it's fine. It's fine. And it'll look even wonkier when you have a, a key signature with many uh, sharps or flats. So if I if I go here and hit shift, shift K for key and I go five sharps, um, to me, this is like, I really wish that this number would be over here. Whatever. Not a big deal. Okay. Cool. 